So I am delighted to uh, welcome you all to a panel that is on one of the most uh, interesting topics, the uh, high growth uh, green and renewable energy sector. Uh, this is a sector where Greece has unique competitive advantages. And this is a sector that uh, admittedly has attracted significant uh, interest from foreign investors as evidenced by the composition of our panel. So without any further delay, I will uh, turn it over to Christina Faitakis from Karajas and Partners, and I will have her uh, introduce uh, the panelists. I'd like to say a tremendous thank you to all of you for your participation, support, and, and friendship over the years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicholas, and thank you for uh, having us and hosting this event. May I kindly ask the participants to go on mute while they are not talking so that uh, we have a clear sound for everybody. Thank you. So um, thank you again, Capital Link, for uh, organizing this forum. And uh, this panel will focus on a sector which has been mentioned uh, in this forum for uh, many times by the Prime Minister, by the Minister of Finance, uh, talking about the Green Pillar in, the, in Greece's economy, and last but not least, uh, the uh, Minister Hadzidakis, um, who mentioned uh, that the target is still there, the ambitious target of reaching 35% supply by renewables in, until 2030 by introducing more than nine gigawatt of new projects in the market during the next 10 years. Let me start by introducing our panel, um, Mr. George Alexopoulos. He is the general manager of the group Strategic Planning and New Activities at Hellenic Petroleum. Welcome, George. Uh, Mrs. Alexandra Conida. Uh, she is the Managing Director and Head of Wholesale Banking in Greece for HSBC. Uh, Mr. Vlasio Souflis, the Director of International Business De Development in Lightsource BP. Mr. Yanis Kalafatas, Chief Finance Officer in Mitilineos Group. Uh, Mrs. Eleni Vretou, who is uh, the Executive General Manager and Chief of Cor Corporate and Investment Banking in Piraeus Bank. And last but not least, Mr. Gabriel Alonso, he's the CEO and president of 547 Energy LLC. So let me start uh, by you, George. And uh, we've, we know that HELPE has established a renewable energy subsidiary back in 2006. But over the last two years, we've seen you announcing a great many deals on the renewable energy. Um, indicating that you have a new strategy on board, boosting on this uh, sector. Can you tell us why, first of all? Why now? Thank you, Christina. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. It's, uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be uh, at the Capital Link Forum, and thank you, Nicholas, for the kind invitation. Uh, I hope that things will return to normal and therefore next year we will all be again in New York as it has become, um, you know, a regular meeting point in uh, December every year. Um, to, to answer your question, um, I think it gives me a very good um, uh, lead to, to tell you a little bit about our strategy. Uh, in the context of the energy transition. Uh, the energy transition is happening uh, not only as a necessity uh, for, the, uh, for addressing the climate change uh, uh, challenge, but also as a result of the continuous improvement in various technologies which are becoming more and more competitive and uh, will eventually provide uh, the full uh, solutions for the energy needs of, uh, of the world. Uh, therefore, we are addressing this uh, energy transition challenge uh, through a new strategy which uh, calls for us to excel in our core business uh, and at the same time uh, develop a, a diversified energy portfolio uh, with increased focus on uh, low carbon 
uh, opportunities. We have a, a sustainable growth target to improve by 50% our carbon fo footprint uh, by the year 2030, so uh, 10 years from now. Uh, it's a challenge, but uh, we are ready for it. Uh, and where we start uh, in all our activities, uh, we start by constantly driving uh, energy efficiency improvement and also uh, undergo uh, digital transformation. In our industrial operations, we introduce sustainable uh, raw materials. Uh, we develop the, renew, the reuse and the recycle of waste streams, and we explore the production of low carbon uh, liquid fuels and uh, green hydrogen. And with that, I will come to renewable power, which is uh, of great uh, interest uh, to us. Uh, we believe it makes uh, a lot of strategic sense for a number of reasons, starting with the creation uh, of value. Uh, it provides uh, competitive re returns. Uh, it offers a strategic hedge, both uh, short term uh, by uh, hedging, in a sense, the increase uh, in CO2 prices, but also uh, longer term hedging the decline of uh, fossil fuels. It contributes to climate change uh, mitigation, uh, both at the national level and also at the company level. It diversifies our energy mix and it offers numerous synergies with uh, our core business. So uh, we are currently uh, developing a portfolio of 1.1 gigawatts, uh, uh, mainly uh, photovoltaic and wind projects. And uh, we aim uh, to have a medium term 600 megawatts of installed uh, capacity. Uh, as you probably know, uh, we are currently constructing a, a large PV project in Kozani. Uh, it is the, currently the largest uh, renewables project in Greece. I'm sure it will be surpassed very soon, probably by us or by one of the other uh, market players. It also happens to be one of the largest uh, PV uh, plants uh, in Europe. Uh, we expect uh, this project uh, to be completed uh, uh, by early uh, 2022, and uh, we aim to achieve our goal uh, of install capacity uh, through a combination of development of our own uh, large pipeline, but we realize this takes time, and there's always projects that drop out along the way, so we're going to combine that with uh, selective acquisitions of project and we are currently scoping uh, different opportunities. Uh, in any event, uh, renewables will be a big part of our investment pro uh, plans uh, for the near future and longer term. Thank you, George. Um, uh, changing to glasses, um, I mean, you are a new entry, if I'm allowed to say, in Greece and solar investment have been underdeveloped in the past years for various reasons. Why now? Why Light Source uh, BP chose this moment to enter Greece? What has changed in your view? Uh, thank you, Christina, and, and welcome everybody. Thank you for hosting us uh, with Capital Link. Um, so there are a few reasons. Obviously, we, Light Source BP is only a solar energy related developer. So Greece has a lot of sunshine, but that's, that's pretty obvious to everyone. Uh, but outside of that, there were a number of factors. I'll just focus on three of those that are uh, pretty relevant at the moment. The first one is that um, uh, according to the European policy towards decarbonization, uh, Greece has built a very good roadmap uh, uh, and a very good, essentially, path to there. Uh, that will create essentially quite a lot of uh, gigawatts of gap in the generation capacity of the country. So the, the lignite uh, power plants will need to essentially close down and that will leave that gap to other technologies, including solar and wind. So that creates a little bit of a volume certainty for somebody to have a little bit of a more longer term plan to actually come into the country. 
Um, the second one would be uh, probably kudos to the Greek government in terms of uh, legislation. So they have implemented Lars, quite. Can you, sorry, sorry, apologies. Can you talk a little bit closer to the microphone because apparently sure. there is a hiccup. Yeah, is that better? So the second one would be again, as I mentioned, uh, kudos to the government. Um, they have implemented quite quickly a lot of legislation. Uh, which is related to renewable energy projects. I'll just mention a couple of things that make a big difference. The first one is they have simplified quite a lot the licensing process. That gives a lot of certainty uh, on the timeline of the project, which was quite a big uh, risk in the past. Um, the second one would be that there is um, uh, multiple routes to market. Uh, so you have the creation of the energy exchange, so you can actually build projects and sell spot. Uh, there has been legislation allowing generators selling directly to corporate uh, consumers. Um, and, and these are going to be in the infancy because they haven't really been implemented in Greece yet. So there's the third route to market, uh, which they have um, uh, uh, basically kept, and that's the uh, power auctions. So the power auctions uh, is a tool that has proven itself uh, to be quite successful in the last two to three years. And now there is consistency of policy um, over a certain amount of years and over a certain amount of volume that, again, allows us to have a little bit more of a long-term plan um, in that front. So I would say overall, the, the, um, the government is open for discussion, but not only that, they're actually reactive to what the market requires in order to have uh, projects that are implementable. And it's not just staying in a, in an, in a, in a, a planning phase. Um, the third um, element that I would mention is uh, financing and the financing conditions and the environment in Greece has dramatically changed in the last 24 months. Uh, again, I'll mention just a couple of points. First one, uh, liquidity. So there's ample liquidity in the market in terms of debt. And there's a lot of expertise actually from the local Greek banks to, to, um, uh, to, to fund uh, the local projects. Um, at the same time, we see a convergence uh, on terms and conditions. Uh, convergence between those terms and conditions in Greece and offered in other similar European countries, um, which means again maturity uh, around this type of asset class. Um, so overall, uh, the risk return profile of Greece uh, has significantly improved, I would say. And again, if we compare it with the other markets that we're looking at in Europe at the moment, it has moved Greece uh, much, much uh, higher in our priority list. Nice to hear that. I mean, quite a positive uh, to hear that from you. Gabriel, I mean, you've been, you know the market since late 90s, early 2000, if I'm not mistaken. Do you share Vlasis' views on, on, on uh, how the changes, the positive changes? Yes, I completely do. I think that I can echo uh, each one of his, uh, his comments. Uh, I think I would add to that that one of the reasons to be in Greece fundamentally is because you have an amazing wind resource and amazing solar resource, of course. I mean, that's uh, without stain. Not everybody uh, enjoys the, uh, the natural resources that, that Greece uh, has. I would say that a lot of things have changed in Greece over the last 23 years since I first, I first uh, went there working for a different company to, to start marketing and looking for opportunities to invest in, in at that point in wind energy. But uh, I think that it is important to, to, to highlight against that. At this point in time, this administration has provided very clear and positive signals for foreign investors like us to go and invest in Greece in renewable energy. Uh, Blas has mentioned uh, uh, some of those. I would also reinforce a couple of messages around the uh, clear and transparent auction process that the, uh, the administration is pursuing to uh, contract for a clean power. For example, in the last two years they have acquired, they have awarded about 1,400 megawatts of wind energy projects and prices of those contracts have come down 25% from the first auction to the last auction. All that 25% improvement goes straight to consumers. It's a benefit to consumers. And the reason that that's happening is because also the investors feel more comfortable about Greece in a very short period of time. So I think that uh, the overall message is that Greece is today, when we look at Europe, a very attractive market to, uh, to invest. Very positive signals from this administration, from the macroeconomic point of view, from the Overall, a stability, political stability point of view, very strong signals that they really like 
they want to uh, promote and transition to a cleaner economy. And I would say that's within the overall political spectrum of the country. And then the financial institutions, we have here a good representation and they will talk about it and how they actually are behind in this industry. And I think that's also very positive. Thank you. I have grouped the financiers, you know, in the, in the last part of this round. And Yanis, I mean, Mitilneos Group has been active. Uh, it was uh, actually one of the first companies that uh, uh, started investing in renewables uh, in Greece. Um, do you see still opportunities? Do you feel that the market is now more mature than it used to be? Is this con a continued strategy for you as well? What, what, what has changed? Yes, well, um, I thought that we were the, the least known for our renewable energy strategy, no. but apparently not. So uh, let me give you a couple of points about where we stand today. Uh, and uh, quickly, I will answer your question. So today, Mitilneos operates like uh, 200 megawatt of mostly wind power in Greece. Um, in, uh, 2020, in 2022, we'll, we will reach 300 megawatt in operation. Uh, we are having another 600 megawatt of solar power in various countries, Australia, Spain, Italy, UK and Cyprus mainly. Uh, which are under construction or they are very mature and uh, they have reached the ready to build stage. So in, um, I would say a couple of years from now, uh, Mitilineos will own a platform of uh, more than a thousand of uh, megawatt of renewable power, uh, 300 of which being wind and another 600 uh, being solar. Um, at the same time, um, we have constructed already more than two gigawatt of solar and storage uh, power as CPC contractors through the joint venture with uh, Medca AGN. Uh, and we have also a pipeline in front of us of more than two giga to construct in the next couple of years. Um, so this is what factually what we have done so far. Now, in terms of, of the Greek environment, I, I think that the Greek market is uh, in the renewables is quite primitive uh, with a lot of opportunities for development of renewable assets. Um, I heard Blasis earlier saying about the auctions um, and I would like to give you the perspective also of the industry. I believe that uh, for a market of renewables to be developed in a healthy way, you need a solid demand platform uh, for that reason. So I believe that this energy transition that we are experiencing. And um, if I'm about to talk uh, from the perspective of a heavy industry, uh, we also see there a fast growing uh, discussion about uh, turning the base industry to green. For example, I will give the, I will give the example of the green aluminum discussion. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was just a very light discussion within two years. Uh, the whole thing has uh, developed very rapidly. So today we're talking about even a separate product on the LME. Um, and that drives the, the necessity of all the industries, the heavy industries, to convert uh, to the green power uh, and start the green power journey. Uh, this means that from the demand side, we will have a huge increase of demand from industries and commercials for green power. Uh, which means in turn that uh, we're going to have to see also in Greece in the next years. Um, I would prefer to see that uh, sooner than later uh, to, have, to, to have a transition from the auctions, from the government-backed feeding tariffs to merchant PPAs. This is the reality that we are experiencing in all the markets that we operate. This is something that is happening in markets that uh, a couple of years or three years ago, uh, the, the government-backed PPAs was a dominant uh, kind of uh, solution for the investments to move forward. But uh, gradually, um, all the world is turning to uh, corporate PPAs and merchant risk. And I think that this will be also the case uh, for Greece. Uh, all in all, I see a lot of opportunities. Uh, I see a very premature environment of renewables in Greece. 
uh, and I see a lot of demand coming uh, coming up from uh, from base industries, but also from from large commercials for renewable energy. Thank you, Yanis. Um, let's let's switch to financiers now. Um, Eleni, uh, you are representing. Uh, if you don't mind, Alexander, I'll start with Eleni representing the the retail banking. Um, uh, well, not the retail exactly. I mean the banking se the sector in, in Greece, not the capital markets that I'm expecting Alexandra to talk about. And uh, so, how is your view on the market now? What has triggered a less risk? Ha has it triggered a less profile risk for you banks to finance investments uh, in, in Greece? over the last years. Thank you, Christina. Uh, speaking from a commercial banking perspective. Commercial banking, yeah. <laughs> let's take some. No, um, actually, I would say that the Greek banks have always been quite focused in supporting the, the expansion to the renewable energy sources. Um, it's actually a fact that, you know, all the investments right now in the renewables in Greece have been financed almost exclusively by the Greek banks. And uh, I feel very proud that the Piraeus Bank is the largest financier in this space by far, having an established portfolio of about two gigawatts that is already financed by us, and with a pipeline of about one gigawatt more uh, for the next few years. So the risk profile of those investments has actually been quite satisfactory. And what I mean by that is that the experience, even during the Greek crisis, has been that the renewables has been very resilient. So all the banks have very little exposure, if any at all, within our portfolios that has actually been turned non-performing from the renewables. Um, even though adjustments had to be made and we've seen that, you know, some change in the tariffs in, in the past. What we see also now, like, you know, going forward is that at least, like, you know, the government has taken that into account with the new measures that it has announced for, like, you know, the, to cover the deficit in the renewable sources. So it seems that like in the longer term, like now with the way the options are designed and the government backed schemes as discussed, it seems that we have the certainty of cash flows, but we also have the visibility around the sponsors. What has also been interesting is that we see in the last few years, the evolution of the market in renewables. So the Greek banks outside just supporting like you know, the big players, the big domestic players, like the ones uh, we've seen before uh, across wind and solar, uh, we've also seen, like you know, uh, the Greek banks supporting the incoming investment from foreign groups into Greece uh, by buying out, like, you know, existing assets or license uh, or assets in operation. But we've also been supporting, like, you know, the smaller investments in renewables. So, if, for instance, like, you know, we have a prepackaged solution for uh, agricultural, like, you know, for farmers investing into renewables and setting up small, like, you know, uh, projects of up to one megawatt. Or like you know the energy communities, which is a new sort of like you know concept in Greece around like you know grouping several small megawatts and forming like you know, a bigger project. So we see the gradual evolution of the market. I think the big bet will be around what Yanis mentioned just before, how we actually evolve from the current model, which is basically the auction model and the government-backed uh, cash flows, into the merchant PPAs, the merchant risk and corporate PPAs, which is inevitable. Uh, and it will happen. The question is like, you know, how the banks will respond to that because unlike other markets, uh, we clearly have uh, certain restrictions um, and certain like, you know, uh, constraints that we need to face around like, you know, how many of those corporate buyers, corporate PPAs will be bankable. Uh, what is the maximum exposure that the banks can assume against those groups that have several multifaceted uh, exposures and relationships and what have you. I think those uh, trends have also opened a new like, an array of tools in the financing market. What I mean by that is that, for instance, you've alluded to the capital markets transactions in internationally that can help back or finance those projects. The reality is that we see those instruments also in the Greek market. So uh, last year, we did the first green uh, corporate bond, so a Greek listed mini bond in Greece to finance investments in renewables for Terna Energy. Uh, which was a landmark transaction received like the green bond certification and the proceeds were used to finance equity in those like you know, projects. And we see that there's going to be a more and more like an you know, increasing pipeline around those because the Greek market evolves and matures alongside like you know, those projects and our in the sponsors as well. Thank you, Eleni. And I think that you um, uh, opened the door for Alexandra on the green bond issue. 
uh, I mean, HSBC has been successfully advising NBG in the last five, uh, 500 million issuance of green bonds. And I think that you have in mind developing this market in Greece. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, thank you, Christina. Uh, the, uh, supporting the energy transition and uh, helping our clients, you know, navigate this and uh, 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 provide financing for uh, for renewables project is uh, it's at the heart of uh, of our policy. We have recently announced uh, quite an ambitious plan uh, to to uh, prioritize financing and investments uh, that uh, support this uh, this transition to a net zero. Uh, global economy. Uh, as, as the other speakers in the panel have said, uh, the renewable sector in Greece uh, has been a sector that has uh, exhibited growth uh, over the last years, despite also the, the economic crisis. Uh, taking into account the, the aggressive targets that have been set by the Greek government, uh, the, the measures taken in terms of uh, a regulatory framework, uh, the uh, the uh, steps towards uh, uh, improving the uh, the permitting process, I think, make this sector poised for for accelerated growth over the next years. Uh, the uh, the availability of financing is key, as you said in the beginning. We're talking about uh, nine to ten gigawatts of uh, new projects uh, coming on board uh, over the next ten years in order for the targets to be achieved. Uh, this will require significant investments in excess of uh, 10 billion euros. But the good news is that uh, financing is, is available. It is available at competitive terms. It's provided by Greek banks, as Eleni said. It's provided by multilaterals. Uh, but most importantly, is, uh, from our side, we're seeing a rapidly growing interest from, from investors in the capital markets to, to uh, unlock uh, funds and capital to, to finance green projects. Uh, on a global scale, we have seen uh, issuance volumes of uh, green loans and sustainability linked loans uh, significant, uh, significantly increasing in the last years, uh, given the growing maturity in the market and uh, increasing pressure, I would say, from a wide range of uh, stakeholders, including investors, consumers and regulators. Europe is leading in this front. Uh, and uh, accounts for about 50% of, of the uh, global volumes. Uh, but there is still potential for further growth in the green bond spectrum as green bonds account for less than 5% of the uh, global debt market. Now in Greece as well, we have seen a growing number of green bond issues over, over the, uh, the last uh, one year and a half. Uh, we have, as you said, led uh, the efforts of Greek issuers in accessing uh, the green uh, bond market in the corporate and in the, in the financial sector. Uh, we have uh, uh, been one of the book runners for, for the National Bank of Greece in the first green bond issued ever out of, the, or out of a green bank. The amount was uh, half a billion euros. It was more than uh, two times uh, over, over subscribed and the proceeds of this bond will go to uh, fund the uh, renewables project in Greece. So the potential is there, the, the opportunity is there, and it, it can attract both uh, uh, interest from uh, domestic players and international players, uh, which is important for, you know, for the economic recovery also for Greece and the transition into a low carbon economy. Thank you. The potential is there, it's true. Uh, the thing is to maintain the pace as well. <laughs> so. Starting from you, Alexandra, what do you think needs to be done if, if and I'll address the, pretty much the same questions to all of you, if you, you had the minister in front of you, what your advice would be, what it still needs to be done in order to maintain the pace and achieve the target? I believe that this is a great uh, opportunity for Greece to not only to, to keep up the pace, as you say, to maintain the pace, but actually accelerate it. it it's a key, it's a key uh, a time for Greece to, to, to use you know, the, the renewable sector as a sector to drive uh, uh, the economic recovery, as I said, uh, and uh, align it you know, with, uh, with sustainability and climate goals. Uh, 
the most important for me is, you know, what I said is to 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 do, to have to to take some bolder steps in terms of uh, simplifying uh, the process around permitting, uh, ensure that uh, a, a pipeline of eligible projects uh, for financing is being built uh, uh, fast. Uh, apart from unlocking, you know, capital from from uh, investors that uh, uh, have funds to invest in green projects. Uh, the Greece could also benefit from unlocking capital from the Greek recovery, uh, from the Green Recovery Plan from Europe and the Just Transition Mechanism, so that uh, there's a, a, a huge amount of funds available for Greece to, to uh, tap on uh, to, to fund this uh, energy transition. Uh, and, you know, in terms of regulatory framework, I think, you know, some of the speakers touched upon that as well is, you know, to move uh, uh, to the uh, uh, ability of uh, entering into power purchase agreements that can uh, uh, drive, you know, the further growth of uh, renewables projects in Greece. Thank you, Alexandra. Eleni, your views? I think uh, Alexandra covered it pretty much all, but the one thing I would add, like, which I think is very important for investors, is for the government to inspire the sense of stability, uh, to, like in the sense that it's not a never moving like in a goalpost around regulation. And the reason why I'm saying that is that because we've seen this particular sector being really bruised in the past because of the change of tariffs and the change of the business models, we've seen recently noise in the market around like no possible, like no further tariff cuts or like no how the government would address uh, at least temporarily uh, some of the issues creating the funding of the renewables account. And, you know, the, I think the agony of both investors, but also financiers is to ensure that what is the current framework, like, you know, around renewables is at least stable. And there's not a moving goalpost that people like, you know, are afraid that because they're taking 20 year risk or more, uh, that, you know, tariff cuts may happen, different tax levies may be raised, etc. And I think to that respect, the government did a very solid move in terms of announcing recently temporary measures, but also a more comprehensive set of package uh, around long-term reforms and long-term like, you know, remedies, which need to be further clarified, however, uh, as to how like, you know, the burden sharing will continue to work and we will not see similar deficits or threats around tariff cuts or whatever in the future. Okay, thank you, Lenny. Uh, Yanis, uh, moving to you, and can I please um, take the opportunity to add something in, 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 into your, your question? Because you talked about demand. Uh, and do you, I mean, there is no growth uh, in a market if there is no demand. Uh, so can you also take that element when replying to the question, what needs to be done to keep up the growth? Okay. Um... Well, in terms of demand, I think that demand will be there. We don't have to worry about demand. I mean, the whole world is moving from the final customer to the whole supply chain right to the, to the beginning. They are all moving towards green power and towards um, reducing the footprint and maybe to a net zero uh, emission factor. Uh, so demand will be there. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have to worry about demand. I would have to worry about uh, what Eleni mentioned about the bankability of certain uh, corporate PPAs. So we need to work hard there because in all the countries that we see corporate PPAs, some of them are bankable, some others are not. Um, and leaving that topic, what the first thing that I would say to the minister and I believe that this is very crucial, is to take care of the greed capacity. The, the Greek greed at the moment cannot stand night gigabat. So we need to make sure that we have the grid capacity. And of course, we have the connectivity to uh, further develop renewables. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing is that we need to make sure that the several parts of the green transition are moving together. We cannot develop renewables only, but stay behind in several, several other parts of the, of the transition of the economy to the Green, uh, to the green Deal. Um, and of course, uh, um, if we do all the two things together, I think that we set 
the right base to to develop the renewables uh, in the future. And as I said, Greece has a lot of opportunities to develop renewables in the future. And the target model and the coupling of the markets provide extra opportunities that we, we have to explore further. George, do you share the views from the industry point of view? Uh, Yes, I, I, I do. I do. Uh, I want to uh, stress a couple of points and perhaps add, add uh, uh, one, uh, one more. Uh, I think stability is extremely important. Uh, stability, uh, not only uh, in the regulatory regime, uh, but also in legislation, in taxation, in all the aspects uh, that affect uh, business. So I think this is a message that uh, all, all investors, uh, foreign and domestic, uh, would, uh, would give to, to the government. Uh, on the permitting front, uh, I, I acknowledge a, a number of positive uh, developments uh, in the sense that there is now a new system that uh, uh, substituted for the production license process at RAI, which was extremely inefficient. And the first uh, uh, signals we have from the new uh, digital process are positive. We have to see how it plays out. There's also improvements in the permitting process further along uh, you know, to maturity. And again, we'll have, we'll have to see how uh, it plays out, but it's extremely uh, important. Uh, I can tell you as an example that the Kozani project that we're building now, uh, the permitting process started in the beginning of this decade. If we're still in the decade starting in, two, in 2010, it started you know, in 2011 or 2012. So eight years later, we're building it. We need to shorten that time frame. Uh, the third point that I think is important for renewables, but for investment in general, is judicial reform. You need speed and you need predictability. You need to know rather quickly uh, 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 what the resolution, what the outcome is going to be. No investor is going to wait for years. No investor is going to invest uh, in, uh, in a country where there's uh, you know, uh, very slow progress and lack of predictability. I'm sure as a lawyer, you can appreciate that. So uh, that uh, I think I will, I will leave it at that. I think there are positive uh, developments, positive signs, but uh, there's still work to be done. And uh, as, as, uh, as investors, we are here to, to support. Thank you. Uh, Gabriel, turning to you, if you had uh, Mr. Hadzidakis in front of you, what would you say? Um, what I would tell uh, the minister is that wind and solar are the cleanest, the cheapest and the fastest sources of new energy. I think it's up to the industry to keep it, uh, to re to keep it as the cleanest sources of new energy. It's up to the administrations and to the industry to keep it as the cheapest sources of new energy and the auction process is, is, is the right way to accomplish that. But I think on the fastest point, I think we need the administration to provide for the right framework to permit these projects. I mean, the project that we, we won uh, an, two auctions of the last 12 months for a very large project in uh, Northern Greece, a 300 megawatt project, wind project. This project started the, getting, started the permitting process in 2010, actually a little bit earlier than that. That's, that's something that if you want to make sure that you deliver on your aggressive goals, but credible and, and realistic, that you can deliver on nine gigawatts of additional capacity over the next 10 years, you need to make sure that wind and solar remained not only the cleanest and the cheapest, but also the fastest sources of new energy. And for that, the permitting process needs to be, uh, it, it needs to be uh, leaner 
Uh, and, and that's something where I think this administration has already done work, but I think it needs to keep doing uh, good work on that. I know the current uh, special circumstances are not helping on that process, but still the interest of the minister is there. I would ask uh, uh, the minister to keep uh, focusing on that, to keep the pulse of his uh, administration to make sure that it is um, uh, the, the level of bureaucracy comes down as they are hoping for and they are aiming for. Glasses, I mean, can I uh, add something to your question? Uh, I'm talking about the Green Deal and uh, funds that will become available from the EU. Uh, is this uh, a motivation uh, for, for, for an investor and what needs to be done in that uh, part of, uh, of, uh, of from Greece, I mean, from the Greek government? If you ask me, I would say uh, that uh, if you ask me, I don't know if you were asking me or... Sorry. No, I was asking glasses, but I mean by all means. <laughs> no, no, please, glasses, go ahead. <laughs> no problem, thanks, Gabriel. Um, basically, there are a couple of things. I think on the Green Deal, there is simply too much uncertainty at the moment about how these funds will be dispersed. So it cannot be part of the decision-making process of actually making an investment based on that that is still... Um, uh, yet to come. We are looking at it closely, but it's not part of the decision of us um, uh, moving to Greece or not. Um, now, on the previous subject, um, again, as I agree with pretty much everything else that the rest of the panel said, um, in terms of consistency in particular, I would emphasize again that you need that consistency of policy, consistency on taxation, legislation, regulation, uh, because we do take a risk for 20, 30 years. Um, and you want to ensure that whatever you have in your financial model makes sense. Um, what I would also though add to the rest of the comments is the following. When you have a transition, an energy transition towards a market of corporate PPAs and, and merchant market, like a spot energy price, uh, it takes some time for the market to mature so that investors can have confidence that the market works correctly in order to actually make investments purely on a corporate PPA background, so selling directly to corporates um, or, or selling to merchants. And there are a number of examples of that in Europe. So where coexistment, there is coexisting of merchant projects, corporate PPA projects and auctions uh, from the government. And actually, if you see the volume and what actually moves faster are the auctions from the government that actually also, as Gabriel said, attract the cheapest uh, pricing in terms of solar and wind uh, because they're the most bankable counterparty in, in the country essentially. So if you follow, for example, Portugal, they had a very, um, uh, very good auction round and a very consistent drop in the price in the last uh, two auctions that they had. Uh, then Spain followed by after seeing the Portugal example that um, uh, basically, they want to now announce new auctions. Uh, Poland, which is very similar to Greece in terms of delignitization, so they have a very big uh, coal power demand. They are moving towards auctions um, in order to get that capacity replaced with wind and solar. And, and those three markets that I mentioned, they all have merchant power pricing, they all have corporate PPA legislation, and they all have auctions. So they coexist, and uh, then the market decides what kind of uh, route you want to go for. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, until 2028, the roadmap that Greece has quite, is quite challenging. Um, uh, we believe that this is achievable. We have seen it happening in other markets, uh, but one uh, crucial and essential element of that is a, a big part going towards auctions. That's what I would say. Well, I'm, I'm very proud uh, for our panel because we reached the end of it on time. Uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, for your views. It was very interesting for a lawyer to be amongst you today. Uh, I was very honored. Thanks again, Capital Link, for hosting us. And thank uh, you also, great thanks to the audience that stayed with us uh, all this time. Nicholas, to you. You are on mute. You are on mute. So thank you very much to all of you for uh, a great panel. Also, I'd like to thank you for staying late because we deliver the event uh, in US time, but a lot of you are in Athens. So tremendous thanks to our transatlantic uh, panelists and uh, to everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Looking forward to meet you in person next year. <laughs> <laughs>
Let Bye -bye. me tell you, next year we are going to have a particularly big celebration in New York in December. So please so, book the date. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Fantastic. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.